Good morning, good day, good afternoon. Happy day to you. This is Heather Lockett from Lasting Conversations. We have the spectacular opportunity to be visiting with Cassandra Tannenbaum today. Hey, Cassandra. Hi there. Hi, hi, hi. So you and I bumped into each other at Creative Mornings yesterday. And the theme of our conversation is all about flow flow and fun, flow in kismet, flow in opportunity, flow in community. And we were at this group, which is all about all of those things. And I saw you twirling a hula hoop as was after our group and having some fun. And you and I just got chatting and then click, click, click. You're having to do your whole passion is flow arts, flow fests, um, you're going to tell us all about that. And somehow one of your questions was, it goes into circus. My son is all about flow arts, flow fests as a juggler, as uh, from circus Mercus, from aerial dragons in, in Tampa, all things that get us moving um, personally. And you work with children yes. and having a show, being part of an audience. So tell us, tell us all things flow, Cassandra. Oh my goodness. Well, there's, there's quite a bit to talk about. I know. That's a, (laughs) that's a a big um, introduction. So I am, I'm very honored to be uh, an event producer. I produce an event called Flow Fests and they are circus arts workshop festivals that take place in urban parks in the center of major urban areas, major cities across the United States. And these festivals are free and open to the public to attend. Um, We offer workshops in a number of circus disciplines, circus arts, which we call flow arts because the, um, the act of engaging in a lot of the object manipulation or juggling forms of circus arts Um, also aerial, also dance, a lot of those uh, activities prime us for entering the flow state, which is a uh, an element of consciousness. It is described as a state of optimal uh, physiological and neurological well-being. And um, these activities are uniquely able to prime us to enter the flow state which is um, such a beneficial um, experience because they are not easy. <laughs> they require dedicated practice. There's an intrinsic motivation. We're, we're not doing them because somebody told us to. Certainly, if anybody told us anything, it was please stop playing with toys. And we just <laughs> decided not to. Um, so there are the intrinsic benefits of the engagement in the activity, which is one of the key ingredients for entering the flow state, um, the challenge that the challenge increases as um, practice increases. So there's um, there's always a new realm of movement to discover. There's always a new dimension of play to engage, uh, no matter what discipline you're, you're engaged in. And then also there are the um, physiological benefits, um, much better uh, brain-body connection, coordination, balance. This is something that we discussed very briefly, that all of these activities contribute to um, physical, emotional, neurological, mental, um, and some might even say spiritual well-being. Well, yes, and a bag of donuts. So take us <laughs> oh, I love donuts. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> And a pie in the face. <laughs> I call I call donuts and really anything that's a circle shape with a hole in the center. I call them Cassandra traps. Oh, so if okay. I, if I am walking <laughs> oh, around like a my hula world, hoop, yeah, like a hula hoop, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, hilarious. So take so take us back in case somebody is not exactly familiar with what circus arts actually means. So we can think of juggling and there are balls yes. and pins. Um, yes. We think juggling of, clubs. You can juggle yeah. rings. You can juggle bananas. Mm-hmm. You can juggle um, 
oranges. I mean, the oranges, anything. sure. Yeah. I pick a fruit um, <laughs> or a vegetable. Um, but the idea being that uh, juggling is actually an activity, a human activity that we've been engaged in. There are records that go back thousands Millennia, of years. Millennia, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then how about balance? I think of balance. And, and if you think of a circus or any of these types of performances, there's, you know, high wire, um, yep. balancing on other people. Yes. But the act of balance is on a rollabola type of thing. Oh, you know, all rollabolas are, are just, um, it's, this gets into what you're talking about with our physicality, the neuroplasticity of it all, um, and the focus. And these are very important things. So anything to do with yeah. balance, anything to do with movement. And that could be, yeah, I just want to say that could be mm -hmm. balancing the body yeah. or a body, or it also could be balancing a prop. There are yes. a number of um, juggling forms that really work with balance as well. Right. And so, right. Yes. All of that acro uh, we have at some of our festivals, we're blessed to have an instructor who actually teaches acro yoga okay. on a slack line. Ooh. Ooh. So it's That's a human quadruple a, balance. A human <laughs> on a human on a slack line. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But it's it's pretty fun. So there's and, that component. And there's that. Sure. And then the dance aspects, that physicality dance. with the acrobatics mm -hmm. and dance and movement in general. Um and then perhaps even some partnership. So if you're doing Absolutely. things Absolutely catching another person or holding or somehow passing and yeah. juggling acro yeah. acro acrobatics that involve other people's like acro yoga or mm -hmm. balancing um hand balancing um partner acrobatics and then there's partner dance which right. there's you know there recently actually on um in the social media world of juggling and circus arts there was a flow chart um, that somebody, I guess, has been working on for like 10 years, describing all of the disciplines within the realm of circus arts and how they are related to each other. And dance is there. But in the conversation about this, you know, there's there's a group of us that have said, oh, we should actually make we need one of these for dance because dance is much bigger. It, right. It's its own meta discipline. There's so many different forms of dance and so partner dancing and then the communication aspect, the coordinating with someone else. Um, yeah, there, there are really engaging uh, opportunities within all of these disciplines to have the practice be much more than just a personal endeavor. Right. And one of the things I love about having our festivals in urban parks is being outside is great. Being outside in a beautiful environment, it's great. It's great for us in so many ways, many of which we have only begun to discover. Um, and and being able to gather as a community right. and share in that space, in a lot of ways, one of the reasons that I've constructed the events to occur in this way is I'm, I'm being intentional that we're creating a field of consciousness around exploring play. And when all of us are together in a space, in a beautiful outdoor space, and we're all contributing to this field of consciousness that we're generating around play, because we came to play. It allows for connections that were would have otherwise been impossible. And we got to experience this yesterday because mm -hmm. we were creating a field of consciousness around creativity and community at Creative Mornings. And so we established a connection that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. So it's, it's you know, all of this is, is very much connected. <laughs> um, but what I love about the way that our festivals operate is they really put people in a playful mode, even if they're not there to take a workshop, um, you know, when they come and they look around, they being anyone mm -hmm. and say, what is this? <laughs> and, then, right. and then, oh, I learned, I learned to juggle when I was a kid. I wonder if I can still do it. And then, you know, a half hour goes by and they're just playing for the entire day. And, mm -hmm. and it can't be bad for us as adults, particularly for us as adults to spend an afternoon at play. Well, you know, I was just thinking about all of that. It's, it's 
all generations. It's all generations. And like you said, even to arrive to watch, you know, so that the, to, to watch the circus arts or performances, we all love doing that, whether on TV or you go to Cirque du Soleil or you you're engaged somehow, um, or your kids performances that said, we as adults don't need to forget that it's our turn to play as well and to move our body. So it's one thing to walk, jog, swim. This is great. That doesn't jazz me as much (laughs) as dancing, kicking it up, um, playing out. What I appreciated about yesterday and this moment was reminding me that I can take as, as I was taught years ago by somebody who has a clown and had a good family um, performance uh, business, but they were working with kids and families at a community center, how to juggle and had, had the silks and had all of that. It's as simple as taking a Publix bag, a, a, a baggie or a bean bag, whatever you have, and just tossing one at a time and getting that kind of balance and rhythm. And then you add to it. So I think we can, as adults, especially one, we've forgotten the play part. Two, yeah. is this too hard? And I can't. Those those t- very ancient tapes of, well, I can't. Yes, yes. you can. You're and not the necessarily, self-consciousness and of the it. Self-consciousness. Like, right. I'm out in public and there right. are people watching me fail at a thing. <laughs> right. That, and that's, that's if they come to a flow fest. Right. right. I'm thinking it's as simple as in your own house. In sure. your own house, throw on some music. And yes. grab a tennis ball and just start doing that and engaging with yourself to let to just start let go. And this could be very helpful for all ages as well. So one of the other things that you do, we might slap back into the flow fest, um, <laughs> where there's fire and there's there's all kinds of <laughs> crazy things going on too. Yeah. But some of your other work is it with the boys and girls club. So you work with children Correct. and I'm also thinking of elders and I don't know if that's been your wheelhouse as well, but I'm sure people in the community also work with um, all ages. Yes. Yeah, so um, I, I want to address the question about the elder community first, Yep. because there's been First of all, there's been a, bo- a growing body of research over the last 20 Huge years. Huge science about all of this. Identified yeah. dance, particularly dance, yeah. as the most effective movement slash exercise activity for staving off Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm-hmm. It is more, more effective than tennis, gardening, swimming combined dance. Well, you have the music, which is the harmonics sure. of it all sure. and the move, that body movement, the expression. Yep. Yes. So there's, um, a young lady named, we call her Dr. Kate. <laughs> she has a, uh, company and a brand that's called spin Poi. She actually finished her PhD in studying the therapeutic benefits for poi spinning, which mm-hmm. is a Maori art form. Uh, Maori and Asian Pacific Islander traditions have been spinning weighted balls on strings um, for millennia. And so poi, which is what that's called, a weighted ball on a string, um, poi is, was her focus. And she did a number of clinical studies bringing poi workshops um, and also bringing Tai Chi workshops mm-hmm. into elder community centers. and measuring the therapeutic uh, benefits that poi practice as compared to tai chi as compared of course to a control group that had neither of those activities um would bring so there is within the realm of circus we are uh, circus arts and circus academics we are actively exploring the supportive and beneficial um elements of our of our practice and our play in our discipline for the elder community. My personal focus has been in working with children and Mm -hmm. that has been my entire life. So I actually, um, part of my background is as a classroom educator. I taught American history, American government, sociology, and economics at the high school level. Okay. um, Which I loved. I loved, I was a history student in college and undergrad. Um, it is my 
so social sciences is my area yep. of personal specialization and yeah and delight um and i later thought um that i wanted to start a school i actually did a year's worth of research traveling to educational alternatives around north america um i visited conferences i helped produce conferences um i spent anywhere from an hour to a month in in a uniquely different style, alter, real alternative educational environments. So I was looking at free schools, democratic schools, unschooling learning centers, spaces where the uh, opportunity is given for young people to decide how to manage their time, to decide what it is that they want to study and focus on, and where they could get the support from the school administration and the adults in their lives to buoy them on their own intrinsically self-motivated uh, course of study and educational journey. Uh, that was very interesting to me. That's and very I learned interesting. Yeah. And instead of starting a school, I started a festival. But at some point in this journey, I also was pulled into the realm of after school. Um, I had felt for a long time that I was in a big cage in a, in a school environment. Right. It doesn't really work for me. Right. Um, so in after school, I have been able to really uh, flex my capacity for generating impact um, and imbuing into the young people that I get to work with and the young people that I create programs for as the cultural arts program manager for Boys and Girls Clubs of Palm Beach County, um, imbuing into them a sense of, of personal pride and self-confidence in in their own power to speak for themselves and to be heard. This is just, it's all amazing. And again, all of that in a bag of donuts. <laughs> because you just, there's just so many touch points. And, but going back to the, to the kids and the education um, and the after school, and it's yeah. the title alone says a lot because the kids have been in their boxes. They've been doing yes. their, the best that they can in the environment that they are in with the adults who are doing the best that they can in the environment that they're and the, in and the environment that they're in. Yep. So, but to have the after time where it, it, they can't go home, but this is a safe environment to yes. then let it out. And of course, yeah. as we know, so many schools, they don't have recess that, that added, right buoying that you're talking about to have enrichment time to learn something completely different and um whether programs such as yourself or learning spanish or learning other things but the after school to then in all of the ways that you just described these programs such as yourselves are absolutely intrinsic to what we all need and it's invaluable yes. to these kids. Yes, yeah. it really is. Um, I'm lucky to have had enough experience in the realm of arts. Arts is a big, it's a big it's, heading. We, we were talking about circus. Then right. we were talking this about is, dance. Now yeah. we're talking about arts, all right. arts. So, right. um, I'm going to add the had, color, you have, right? Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> color that. and texture that. and all kinds yeah. of other, the rest so, of the art. Yeah, I'm lucky to have had some professional experience in a whole <laughs> hilariously wide <laughs> variety yeah. of art forms um, and really love that I can dip into some of those knowledge bases and those areas. And then, of course, also reach out to experts that I'm very blessed to have in our community here right. in South Florida. We live in an extremely culturally rich environment with a lot of very deep resources and long established arts institutions. So, um, yeah, our kids getting to benefit from all of that is very important to me. Um, so yeah, we run programs in, of course, dance, um, but also recording arts and digital media and content creation, photography. We have an award-winning photography program, Boys and Girls Clubs of Palm Beach County. We're very proud of both our members and our instructors, um, who create that and visual arts, um, and then music performing arts. So yeah, there's, there's a lot going on constantly. Um, and it's all beneficial. We have had some programs to provide flow arts instruction for mm -hmm. our kids in the clubs. I, of course, want to expand that greatly. Um, but it can be a bit of a challenge to make the argument. So something that I'm looking forward to in the next few years 
is developing the body of work around um, programming and curriculum for flow arts, for juggling, for circus arts in in the realm of arts. In the United States, we're very interesting. We see the circus as more in the realm of humanities than in the arts. We see professional theater in the arts, but we see circus and we we fund circus through the the pathway of the humanities. Um which and is the an theater, interesting the theater. Distinction. Yeah, and I can imagine, but but help me with this assumption I'm making through the through the lens of um audience viewing versus participation and the benefits well, there, of participation. Absolutely. Is that what you're saying? Is that so the money yeah, is there's a little bit of that. Skewed, yeah. It, yeah. Circus isn't considered a fine art form in the U.S., I, right. whereas in, in other countries around the world, it absolutely is. Correct. And it is funded as such. And so circus artists are able to, you know, have a right. very fulfilling life as professional artists in their own right. right. That's not necessarily true in the United States. It's a well, lot harder. I know. So- and part of that is, part of that comes from this perspective that we have, that yeah. circus is entertainment and it's mm-hmm. not art. It's entertainment. And then, sorry, Mr. Ringling, you kind of set us up for a fall in terms of, yeah, that, yeah. that kind of creep, the creepy side uh, that sure. you're meant to watch and gawk and pay for watching and gawking, as opposed to literally the art and majesty um, and supreme physicality yes. of what is really happening. So these days, you know, the the show show, some people do that kind of show. But yeah. really, it's in it's in the Olympics of it all. It's in the sport. Sure, it's right? sport. It's, it's right, sport it's sport and, it's and art entertainment, and it's, and it's there and to it's, be viewed yep. as an audience and awed at, awed by, right, and then leave. But so you're hoping you know, to kind of twist the paradigm that, as a as, yes. as an alchemist that you are. You're yes. you're we're we're here as we share that, um, we're here to help twist the paradigm of the thinking behind it. So what you were really saying is it is an art form. There are scientifically proven benefits to the physicality of it and yes. the neuro, you know, the imagination and, and uh, yes. we can get into steam, you know, STEM steam. Oh, where you oh don't even arts. get me started. There's <laughs> so, so first of all, what I hate about steam is that it relegates it it seems to relegate the arts to a degree that is less important than science science technology engineering and math oh we'll just throw art in there because we don't want art to feel left out look now art is just as important um i I but there's it's it's moving it's moving and i hear you and it's moving in that direction but there are so many there are so many legitimate scientific pathways right. for discovery, for research, for understanding. And then there's engineering yeah. pathways, there's mathematical pathways um, for inquiry in what we're doing when we're playing with the world, right. <laughs> when we're playing with objects, when we're playing with our bodies, when we're, you know, balancing against the forces of gravity, when we are, you know, moving our bodies and studying the exercise benefits, if there are some of our practice, um, there's so much there. There's sure. So well, so there. nothing but physics, you know, physics and oh, 100%. geometry, you know, the, the geom, it's, it all, I think what you were saying earlier in terms of that somebody has created a visual a flow visual. And, oh, and, yes. and if mm-hmm. someone was really going to blow this up as of, as the, the, the Zen diagram fam, that, you know, the Venn diagram, <laughs> the Zen diagram that it is, yeah. it all loops together. Yes. Everything, is every connected. single nanoparticle of the science that relates to the physicality that relates to the, the, mental, emotional, and then consciousness flow states. I mean, we really, really sure. could go there. And maybe there are people doing dissertations on the whole thing, but hopefully we, there are. Hopefully there are. <laughs> so, I did write, I yeah? wrote my master's thesis um, on the relationship between the flow state 
and hoop dance and the five wisdom energies of Vajrayana Buddhism, because that it just, ah. that was, <laughs> that was what I was studying at the time. Um, but I do think that there is a, a greater body of work in the a- academic sphere, in the scholarly sure. sphere around, um, examining this area of human life and so how, let's get, I how love deep it. it is connected. Yeah. And how it's so connected. So let's get Tell us a little bit more from that about flow state. Now, most of us know it's letting go. You surrender. Yes. Some people, it's it's a type of prayer. You know, that's that kind of surrender. And you yeah. can, ah, you can sing um, mo- all the time at these flow fests. There, there is music. So there's, oh, yes. there's, there are beats. There are vibrations. Um, yes. It's, a, it's that flow is that deeper and deeper letting go of our monkey minds, of our muscle tightnesses. So tell us more about flow state from your perspective. Sure. Absolutely. So there are, um, there are research studies that are defining the dividing line between the flow state and the meditative state or the varieties of meditative states that exist, um, for us in, in, alternate forms of consciousness right. from day to day living. Right. Um, the flow state is unique in that it is um, experienced as an exhilarating space where the sense of self-importance and time and limitations seem to disappear um, where you are at one in focused, intentional engagement in an activity and that um, the activity is compelling and pleasurable uh, in in the moment that the moment could last for for all time because time time and space limitations seem to disappear and you're just focused and engaged in what you're doing. Um, I find that uh, the flow state over the course of let's say the last 30 years um, since the the book uh, Flow, The Optimal State of Being uh, by Mihaly Siktek Mihaly, who is a positive psychologist, uh, uh, really at the forefront of the positive psychology movement out of the University of Chicago, I believe. Um, That book became a bestseller in the 90s. And um, ever since then, people have been trying to understand the flow state more. People have been trying to experience the flow state more. People have been able to identify that this is a distinct uh, uh, way of of experiencing consciousness and that it is distinct from the meditative states that have been accessed Mm -hmm. for millennia, right, Mm -hmm. Um, through all kinds of different meditation practices. Some people do describe the activity of the flow arts as movement meditation. Mm -hmm. I don't really use that term because I don't want to conflate the two. They are distinct. They are doing distinct things to our brains, Um, particularly in the flow state. uh, Neurologists have been able to identify and neuroscientists have been able to identify the specific neurotransmitters that are that become heightened, that become more engaged when we are experiencing the flow state, Um, that these neurotransmitters allow our brains to pump out the chemical stew that generates connections between our neurons. Mm -hmm. So we are literally flooding our brain with synaptic hormonal stew, hormonal growth stew, (laughs) um, to build connections, to increase the, the degree of neuroplasticity that we have in that moment. So the more frequently we can enter the flow state, the more frequently we are literally building our brains and rebuilding our brains, which is very hard to do as we age. So I love all of this and I can't help to think, so Perhaps this nuance that there's meditation, which is is cerebral, and and we can go there. But adding the physicality. Yeah. So I'm going to make a statement as a question for you <clears throat> that 
if you're talking about the neuroplasticity, there is the brain, but we have our body, our muscles have their memory. You know, they call it muscle memory. And what's in our actual legs and feet and toes and arms and organs, then I'm making an assumption that yes. by adding the movement of dance or the movement of juggling, the movement of doing fire poi, you have to have a certain body mind focus so yeah. that you can enter a flow state without yeah. literally leaving dimensions, although you can kind of leave dimensions. But if if this is what you're saying, that the body itself, which is gets back to the elders especially, and but but children, children learn by physically touching and yes. doing physically. And yes. that the elders remember their dance step you know, as, as much as they can, or you, you remember you're riding a bicycle. So maybe speak to that a little bit. Cause that, as you were speaking, I couldn't help but think of the memory and those neuroplasticities and synapses within every corpuscle of our actual physical body. Absolutely. So we tend to forget the brain is a part of the body. The brain right. is in the body. It's not just the head cerebral. No. It's the whole Correct. body. The right. brain is in the body. <clears throat> so the neural pathways that we're talking about also can be extended to literally the nerve pathways mm -hmm. through our body that trigger the various physiological responses. Okay. So if I'm doing anything rep repetitively, I'm reinforcing that neural pathway, that nerve pathway, the communication band between our control room, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. um, and our muscles that are primed to move in specific ways through practice. So sometimes we also forget that, you know, our nervous system, it is, it is a full body system. Right. So Yes, neuroplasticity is a amazing, I would say, fringe benefit, but um, I'm going to keep practicing this thing until I get it. I'm going to keep practicing this thing until I get it. I'm going to keep practicing this thing until I get it. The more practice I put in, the more time I put in, the more I am refining the nerve pathways and the muscle memory, as you described, for this specific movement. It's going to benefit me. I don't know how. And we, I think as a, as a culture, we are still learning about the physiological benefits mm -hmm. of, of movement practice in all forms. In object manipulation, in juggling, in circus arts, in acrobatics, and in dance, um, we are still learning about the benefits of that. Um, I actually recently read a number of studies that were specifically looking at the uh, sociocultural, physio-emotional benefits of West African dance, which mm -hmm. happens to be a dance form that I'm personally very much in love with um, and have studied as an adult for over a decade. Um, and I get very excited when I think of it. <laughs> um, I really love it. And it's it's so broad and so deep. One could study West African dance for their entire life and never get to the bottom of it. Um, well, which I and again, this is love. ancient, right? Ancient of days. Ancient. ancient. Of days. This is This is our primal come from. Yeah. So one, one of the been, many, but yeah, go ahead. Right. So they've been looking into the benefits of this and right. they have found uh, increased um, he, self healing capacity in the body. So the amount of time um, that one would recover from an illness is shorter, shorter recovery times from illness and injury, um, uh, a much higher degree of protection for our cardiovascular system, which, you know, heart disease and cardiovascular disease generally is a huge, costly challenge that we have created for ourselves as a, as a culture and as a population. So, um, you know, being able to specifically, you know, untangle these benefits 
that's huge that our organs can recover from illness or injury at a much higher rate as at a much faster um, time period. That's extraordinary. And that's not considered medicine. But these activities are healing. And science is finally getting around to acknowledging that and demonstrating that. So right. it's a very exciting time. Oh, it is an exciting time. So um, I know we could rabbit hole forever. And I want to know, you have many things. We were giggling about the link tree. as a, It's a great, oh, yeah. here's my business card technology, but then somehow it all disappears. But you have many really cool links of all the different uh, places that you're involved, the places that are your passion. Um, your job with Boys and Girls Clubs alone is mammoth and huge and wonderful. But tell us more. Um, you even have something, one of the links having to do with spatial toys. So yes. tell, let's just take a couple of minutes before we, we will have to end the show, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> um, but tell us about these tactile toys, these spatial toys that, again, for all ages, but they seem really extra fun. Building blocks are great. Legos, they, you know, these are standard, standard bearers. And then sure. it seems like there's a whole nother realm. So tell us yes. more about that. And, so, and once upon uh, a time... Whoever Mr. Hula Hoop or Mrs. Hula Hoop invented a little piece of circle that thousands of years ago, that <laughs> many in, thousands of many years year, ago, right? And then it just <laughs> turned into plastic. But it's it's so the these inventions from probably ancient of days. Tell us more about some of these spatial toys or some of these links that you're um, sure showing. So we. The company that I run, which is actually Monkey Dust Productions, Monkey Dust Productions is the event company and the design. That's right, because you company. have actually have many different company iterations. Yeah, right. Yeah. So and a Monkey nonprofit, Dust, right? Isn't there a nonprofit oh, link? Yes. So okay. yes. Monkey Dust Productions is the company. It is a for-profit company. It's my company. We run Flow Fests events. Yeah. And Flow Fests events are fiscally sponsored by a nationwide nonprofit called Fractured Atlas. They are a 501c3. They operate as our fiscal umbrella and they are designed to support artists. There are a number of circus companies and circus arts professionals who are um, affiliated with Fractured Atlas in some way. Some are fiscally sponsored as we are. Um, we achieved our fiscal sponsorship in 2015 or 16. I think it was 15. Um, with Fractured Atlas, and uh, it's been an amazing opportunity for us to feel secure as a nonprofit project, even though we're run by a for-profit entity. So that's been a fun, um, mm -hmm. that's been a, a fun setup. Um, but Flowfests, as a nonprofit project, we receive um, sponsorship inquiries from companies all over the, the world. Um, Every year, there's one particular company that we have worked with since the beginning, which for us is 2011. Uh, the very first Florida Flow Fest was in 2011. And ever since then, we've been working with Fun in Motion Toys. So Fun in Motion Toys is a South Florida-based toy company that creates skill toys and puzzle games for all ages and all levels of ability and uh, they have a number of really engaging products out on the market. Their most popular product is Shashibo, which means shape-shifting box Shashibo. It was featured on the Today Show as the hottest um, puzzle toy of the year 2020. Um, so, yeah, they, they're, they're doing great. And we've been super honored that in their doing greatness they've decided to share with us and they support the festival um every year they support all of our festivals every year but the toys that they create and the props that they create are uh, they're they're really engaging a number of the products have been certified as um supportive for uh, people who are on the spectrum Mm -hmm. And there are a number of autism communities who have really keyed in on the Fun in Motion Toys brand and some of their products to be very beneficial for um, individuals who are on the spectrum who are looking for 
the sensory experience, the tactile experience, as well as um, some of the other benefits, the creative benefits of playing with these toys. So um, that's a little bit about one of our sponsors. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of other uh, event sponsors that we work with. Most of them are prop companies. So most of the companies that we work with who become sponsors of FlowFest are creating products or companies that we believe in who are creating products to benefit the communities that we serve. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So Cassandra, what do you have on your horizon? Are are there shows coming up or where would you like to lead the way as we are rounding out our conversation here? Sure. Well, we have two more flow fests coming up this year. Two more flow fests. For 23. Coming up this year okay. for 2023. Yeah. The first of those is Midwest Flow Fest in Chicago. We hold this event in Ping Tom Memorial Park in the middle of Chinatown. And it's really gorgeous. We wow. have flow artists coming in from all over the Midwest region. Um, and so we will be gathering in Chicago on September 16th, Saturday, September 16th. We're actually going to have a number of pop-up events throughout the weekend in Chicago. Um, But the main fest day, the main festival day is Saturday, September 16th. And then October 22nd in Tampa Bay, we are having the second Florida Flow Fest of 2023. Um, This will be our first time bringing this festival to the Tampa St. Pete area. And we are very excited. That community and those cities have been literally begging me to bring this festival to them and they've earned it. And I'm very, very happy to um, put it together and put it on. And that's happening very soon, October 22nd. Um, And then in 2024, we are actually about to announce all five of our FlowFest events for 2024 um, with the dates. The theme for the year in 2024 is Sprout. So we are going to continue sprouting Um, And we will be having events in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, in Seattle, Washington, in, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember them in date order, in Chicago, Illinois, um, in Dallas, Texas, and once again in the Tampa Bay and St. Pete area um, in 2024. So wow. it's a full year. It's very yeah. exciting. And and what's coming up, you know, just in a few short weeks is also very exciting. It sure is. Wow. This is, I love the flow of this conversation. I love that it, it is, as water does, can kind of go everywhere <laughs> and then yeah. bring, brings back to center. And this has been so, so fun. And we have... It's just, it's so rich that what you do and what the opportunities are. So where can we find you? You have a website or 12, but it, yes. there's the main website. It's, it's just one and it's yep. Flow Fest, F-L-O-W-F-E-S-T-S, because there's more than one, flowfests.com. We also have on that website, a Google calendar of Flow Arts events around the U.S., the ones that we don't run the ones that are run by other entities and other organizations from small backyard spin jams all the way up to multi-day fire festivals. Um, They're all on the calendar. So definitely check it out, flowfests.com. Love it. I I will need to check out a spin jam. (laughs) Yes. This is good. Well, you know, and it's all in my heart because my son, like I had mentioned, he just has had that in him and it, and all of these disciplines from acrobatics on up helped with his own schooling and getting through school and all that. And now he's a professional at it. Um, but the, the Diablos and the poise when the, can I have a fire poi? You were really spinning fire and kerosene all over the place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, we are. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, just it's amazing so it's great for the kids and it's multi-generational and i really yeah. appreciate you and this uh flowing conversation that we've been having thank you so much heather thanks, it's thanks been so much and thanks everybody for listening please be sure to like follow review and share this podcast and if you'd like to be part of the conversation send emails to podcasts at lasting conversations and find us on facebook this is lasting conversations we get to the heart of everything.